Hi everyone, welcome to another design lesson video. In each video, I'm going to review some key design principles that you should keep in mind when you're thinking about renovating or decorating your space. So if you have a design dilemma and need some answers, feel free to comment in the section below with your questions. Your dilemma could become one of these design lesson videos right here. Today's topic is all about designing a kitchen using universal design principles. First off, let's clarify what universal design means. Universal design is the design of a space that can be accessed, understood, and used to the greatest extent possible by all people, regardless of their age, size, ability, or disability. It's also closely related to a concept called aging in place, where spaces are designed to allow you to live safely and independently in your home for as long as possible. Essentially, we can all benefit from these principles, especially in the all-important kitchen. You'll want to consider these important elements before you need them, because when things change, they can change quickly. So if you're planning on a kitchen renovation, you'll want to have some of these things in mind. Consider it future-proofing your home, not just for you, but even if you're planning on selling your home in the next few years, a universal designed home is very much sought after. There's so much information online about actual dimensions and requirements. A great resource is the ADA Accessibility Standards Guide, which I will link to in the description below. But it's also very important to check with your local building codes. In many cases, if you're starting from scratch, new construction building code requirements are very different than if you're just renovating or altering an existing home. And the dimensions I mentioned here in this video may be different in your jurisdiction. So make sure to do your research with your local municipality. So let's get right to it. Here's everything you need to know about designing an accessible kitchen. The first element is all about the path of travel, meaning the pathway to the kitchen needs to be accessible, especially for those with mobility devices such as walkers and wheelchairs. So think about your corridors and door openings. Ramps can also be installed if you have some steps to contend with. The best rule of thumb for your path of travel is to keep a clear path of 36 inches in width for residential settings. Public spaces have wider requirements. Check with your local authorities to make sure you meet the minimum. The other important aspect of a universal kitchen is the path of travel in and around the kitchen and having space between counters and around peninsulas and islands so that someone with a mobility device can comfortably navigate. A clear width of 42 inches to 48 inches is a great target. And if you have seating at an island, you'll want 60 inches of clear space behind the counter to allow for someone to sit while someone else passes behind easily. In bathrooms, having ample space to turn around in a wheelchair is really important. It would be ideal in a kitchen too. A five foot turning circle refers to the clear floor space required to turn around in the room if you were sitting in a wheelchair so that you don't have to back up and reverse out. Heights are really important in universal design, especially when we're designing a kitchen. Having a variety of countertop heights makes the space very user-friendly for everyone. Countertops are usually a standard of 36 inches above the floor, but consider lowering the counters to 34 inches overall and having additional counter space at an even lower height of 30 inches above the floor. This height in particular is also the height of a dining table. Incorporating a dining height surface not only allows for dining, but also a great surface to work at for meal prep. Lowering your general counters to 34 inches above the floor allows for extra reach as well and is great for areas like the sink or the cooktop. You can add things like a bench seat as part of your kitchen design for those that can't stand for long periods of time. And of course, there are so many clever inserts that can make your upper storage more accessible. And appliances need to be placed at comfortable heights as well. A range of and may be difficult to access down low, so it's preferable to have a cooktop and a wall oven instead. A wall oven can be placed at a height that best suits the homeowner, where they don't have to bend down low to get anything in and out of the oven. And a cooktop with controls near the front is much easier to use. Induction cooktops are even safer as they don't heat up unless there's a pot on the surface. This is great for households with children as well. It's a good idea to raise the dishwasher for comfortable access. 
or incorporate dishwasher drawers for even easier access. And a side-by-side -side refrigerator provides all users the best access to both the fridge and the freezer. Under-counter refrigerators and freezer drawers are again an ideal option. Another key aspect of wheelchair access is knee space, particularly at key areas of work like the sink area as well as the cooktop area. In many universal kitchens, you'll find lots of open space below these two areas, and they can be incorporated into the overall look of the kitchen design. Floating sinks like this one make the space easy to use and easy to clean. But you can also recess the cabinetry under these areas so that you still have storage while still allowing someone with a mobility device to get closer to the counter. Having knee space in combination with a table height countertop will allow for someone to sit at the counter and meal prep or even eat whether they're in a wheelchair or not. I also love the idea of adding a pull-out chopping block if you don't have space for that dining height counter. This provides for a very practical work surface. Or this one here acts as double duty. Use it for chopping or as a landing pad near the oven. And speaking of landing pads, also known as drop zones, when designing your kitchen layout, always incorporate clear flat surface areas adjacent to major appliances, especially the stove and microwave to prevent having to carry heavy pots or hot dishes too far. If you are enjoying this video and find it helpful, please hit that like button, share this video with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe for more design videos. If you're interested in more universal design videos, let me know in the comments below. It's such an important topic and we all benefit. If you need personalized interior design help from me, check out my Patreon page. I've got several tiers, one of which is a one-on-one -on -one design consultation with me. Head to patreon.com slash for all the details. And then there's a whole category of things that makes your kitchen easier to enjoy. Cabinet hardware should be in the shape of D poles with large space for fingers to fit between the hardware and the cabinet, making it much easier for individuals lacking dexterity in their hands. A sink faucet with one single lever for mixing hot and cold water are also great because they only require one hand to operate. There are lots of touch and or voice activated faucets that can be very useful as well. And of course, there's a whole slew of smart home systems and apps that can allow you to control the lights, window shades, and even your entertainment system. A pot filler faucet would be very helpful so that you're not transporting heavy pots full of water back and forth through the kitchen. Cabinetry below the counter should be drawer storage as much as possible. Accessing items in a drawer is much easier to do than accessing lower cabinets. Adding LED lighting to the interiors of your cabinets can make it easier for those with vision impairment. And even open shelves can make access to everyday objects very user-friendly. And finally, grab bars are not just for bathrooms. Incorporating grab bars into the edges of your kitchen countertop can be a great enhancement to those with limited mobility. One of the best ways to make your kitchen as safe as possible is to consider the finishes, especially the floor finish. You'll want a non-polished material so that everyone can move around easily and safely. Wood flooring can offer up a seamless material and it's warm and comforting underfoot. It can easily transition from one space to another, minimizing level changes as well. Large porcelain tiles are a good option so long as they have some texture on the surface for that slip resistant quality. It's important to also make sure you have a good tile installer so that all the tiles, no matter what size, are installed in a level manner to avoid tripping hazards in projecting tiles. And if you're using a mobility device, do away with floor mats and area rugs altogether. Wall finishes, countertops, and cabinetry colors are also important. They can provide visual cues. Ideally, there should be contrast between the flooring and the lower cabinetry, and then between the cabinets and the countertops. For instance, this kitchen, although lovely, doesn't have enough contrast between the countertops and the lower cabinets. It would be difficult to distinguish the edge of the counter here. 
light colored countertops are very helpful as so much of what we do in the kitchen happens on the counter. Light colors reflect more light and help us all to see things better and clearer. But don't worry, high contrast doesn't just mean black and white finishes. Here are some great examples of contrasting materials in kitchens. And finally, lighting. Lighting up your kitchen requires several layers of lighting. A ceiling light will provide down lighting into the room. This is important for general illumination and you may need more than one ceiling light depending on the size of the room. Recessed down lights or pot lights or cans, they're all the same thing, can provide great general illumination as well. If you have a kitchen island or even a peninsula, it's a good idea to add some kind of pendant light from above. That light should hover over the countertop about 30 to 36 inches and acts as task lighting for that surface area. Task lighting for key work areas in your kitchen makes it safer for everyone. Of course, I love a wall sconce. Wall sconces can be positioned in key places for a little touch of design appeal, but more importantly, as a spotlight of light. Wall sconces above the sink are a great idea. If you have upper cabinets, then under cabinet lighting is another great way to highlight those important countertops. And remember, a light countertop will reflect that light too, making it even more useful. Under cabinet lights come in all sorts of styles these days. I love these linear LED strip lights because they provide lighting all the way along that countertop. Another way to define the space is by integrating lighting into the bottom cabinetry along the toe kick area so that it illuminates the floor. This is also great as a nightlight for everyone from kids to the elderly. It also helps to easily define the edges of your kitchen cabinetry and it looks amazing. So here's your takeaway. Universal design is all about making spaces safer and better for everyone. We all benefit from a well-designed space that accommodates all our needs and our future needs. If you're about to embark on a kitchen renovation, keeping all of these elements in mind will help you create an accessible, safe, and comfortable kitchen for your home. And you can make it look great too. Plus, aren't we all aging in place? And if you are interested in aging in place, then an accessible bathroom design is also a must. Check out this video for all that important information. The link will be listed in the description box below. And if you want more universal design videos, or if you have more questions, then leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them all in another video. Thanks for watching my latest design lesson video. If you liked the video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss the next episode. All that helps to grow this channel. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram. And if you need individualized help from me, find me on Patreon. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. <laughs>